What's up, homies? Homies, homies. Today we're going to take apart a, a couple knives just for the fun of it. Um, and I got a request to do it. This is uh, the Hogue EX01 mold knife as it uh, has been come to my attention. And thanks a lot, guys. I never even realized how this looked like mold until people brought it up. And now, freaking, I can't get it out of my out of my mind. It does look like mold. It's like mildew. Kind of gross. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to take that apart. It's button lock, manual button lock. And here is a very expensive custom from a Chinese maker, Huang Dong. He has been making uh, custom knives for about 57 years. He specializes in pocket clips that are almost as long as the entire knife, as well as sculpted zinc alloy. Wow, sucker fires hard. It's got uh, premium Teflon coating. Actually pretty dang sharp too. Yeah, it's sharp. Um, he specifically designs his knives with a lot of blade play. Um, both, you know, in all directions. And he does that for, you know, if you stab into something, it kind of helps alleviate some of that built up tension to prevent the mechanism from, from breaking. So he specifically designs his knives with blade play in them. It's pretty cool. Uh, this cost about uh, 1700 bucks to get this, so it's very nice. Uh, another, sorry this is turning into a review, uh, another cool feature that uh, of this knife is he uses uh, Allen head screws, Torx screws, and more Allen head screws. So yeah, he uses a good wide variety. There's a lanyard hole there. Super nice, super expensive. Sorry if this video runs long. Uh, depending on how it goes, I may end up either fast forwarding or editing stuff, edit, editing stuff out. But more than likely what I'll do is just blab while I take this apart. Because why not? Today is actually Mother's Day. I don't know when this video is going to see the light of day, but uh, today is Mother's Day. So I made the wife a nice, delicious breakfast in bed. Then uh, we grilled up some steaks and kind of relaxed outside. It was a very nice day. Very, very nice day. So here we've got a hex bolt and and of course I don't have the right freaking size on here. Oh, that makes me mad. Freaking hate that. Let's see if this will work. There we go. It's kind of slipping. Perfect. Use a Torx bit on it. Fits all the corners like it should. Okay, so let's very gently take this apart here. Here you can see the metal insert. Uh, this does not have any washers. The blade just rides right on that metal insert there. Here are the brass inserts for the pocket clip if you were to switch it. Um, this is where the spring is housed. Here is the spring. Let's get this blade off here. Come on, baby. Whoa! Here is the uh, other side of the pivot. Steel insert. Stop pin comes out of there. And the safety switch right here, which I'm not going to take apart, guys. This thing sucks. It's got the spring in here and this little tiny ball bearing that acts as the detent. Not taking that out. Here is the button. So there's the uh, flat side. Here's the hollow side. So basically, the spring sits in here. That goes inside this channel. And that provides the tension for the blade. 
So when this blade is in the closed position, it actually looks like this. And let's see, or wait. I'm getting confused. Yeah, like that. So then that's what acts as the detent when you open it up. This is how this rides inside that. Okay, now, got to keep all this separate here. Pretty cool, it's got these, uh, these steel pins that uh, meet up right there pretty sweet. And then the screws that go into these brass, I, I assume it's brass, uh, inserts right there, being how this is all G10. Constructed very well, I and mean, that's a pretty complex system setup. Okay, now for this guy. I'm pretty curious myself on how these differ. Like I mentioned in my other video, the main difference is how that detent works, because this one's basically locked shut until you press that button and then it releases it worse that isn't the case on that oh come on oh yeah it's not gonna work freaking moron Got to use the right bit. Whoa. And of course, she wants to freaking fly open. Okay, here we've got the dome safety. I don't think I'll even put it back together with it in there. Stop pin. Here is the button. Um, one thing that I can tell you that differs on these two, coincidentally, see how this button doesn't go all the way through? On this, it actually does go all the way through. And that's the tricky part about putting this thing back together. It doesn't make any sense. You're trying to put it back together and this just keeps falling all the way through. And there's kind of a little bit of a trick to get it back together. Uh, the same essential design. Here's the spring, sits inside there. Here's the channel, similar to this one. Same type deal. Uh, main difference, wow, what is that? Spacer. Of course, this has, I'm probably not even gonna put this damn thing back together. It's really not worth it. Well, wait, no, I'm sorry. I mean, it's, it's a super expensive custom, that's right. So it definitely is worth it. Here's the spring, uh, similar to all modern side opening automatics. Just a coil spring that sits in there when you close it, winds it up, builds up pressure. And the spring, a little tiny baby washer. And uh, one part of the spring just goes inside that, that hole right there and attaches to the blade. So, the main difference is, do you see how th this right here, so this is where it's at when it's stopped. And so basically, when this is closed, this sits, in oh, B. this sits inside here, the button, and prevents it from opening. Until you press the button, move it out of the way, and then it'll open up. It doesn't have that little channel like this one. And so that's the basic difference between the uh, automatic and the semi-auto. And my camera's about to shut off on me. So let's see if we can get this back together. Okay, uh, what the hell am I doing? So this goes here. 
Sorry for the length of this video, guys. Like I said, I don't know how much of this is going to really see the light of day. Don't need those damn things. So last time I put this together, what did I do? I closed it, and that's kind of the, the secret, I think, if I remember right. You've got to put this through, maybe. Oh, son of a bee. And then you've got to close it. And that way you can get this sucker back together. Put a spring in. Go like that. this back in there I'm not even gonna try to put the other one back together guys well I might after this I might toy with it for a second but oh wait I need these that's right one thing that uh, kind of stinks about this Hogue is they use uh, for these little screws as well as that little screw they use a, a hex bit, but it's like the smallest hex bit they make. So like, uh, I think it's a two or something. So like my bolt, either one of my kits, this goes, no, it's a one. So this only goes down to 1.5. So I was lucky enough that I happen to have a, uh, like the super crazy hex kit that has metric and US sizing and it's got like every size imaginable so that's where I got this bit from otherwise I wouldn't have been able to do it anyways so that's kinda of the differences I don't know I might not even upload this video so let's see here so yeah so it's resting, so do you see how the uh, the button's kind of resting inside that channel? That's what it's inside right there. But that channel allows it to push that button out. So that action is what creates the detent. Whereas on this guy, this would be fully locked in this position and you'd actually have to press the button to move it out of the way. So that's the main difference between the two. Alright guys, I've talked way too long. Catch you later.